if you were a student and murderous ghosts were haunting your school, what would you do? I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat every ghost in school tales. This boy is about to be dragged into hell. Witchia hears racing up the school stairwell when he runs into his friend Q and tells him he's terrified of being punished. The boy has misplaced his textbook, and if he doesn't find it, it's going to cost him everything. Rushing into the classroom, he desperately searches his backpack, but it's too late. Suddenly, day turns to night, and the words on the chalkboard magically disappear before the kid is attacked by a strange blue light. He's just been killed by a ghost, and soon six terrifying spirits will make everyone wish they skipped school. They'd be much better off redeeming real rewards like free hotel rooms, discounted meals, and show tickets at any MGM Resorts property and many others around the world. Just like you can with this video sponsor, MGM Slots Live, link in the description. It's easy to download and includes an engaging user interface suited to collect more chips than you could ever imagine. With a 4.9 star rating on Google Play and over 1 million downloads, the MGM Slots Live community is growing fast and you don't want to miss out. The game features a unique loyalty program, which means the more you play, the more you gain. Pick from a variety of different locations to spend your hard-earned loyalty points and redeem amazing rewards. My personal favorite is receiving a ride on this luxurious cruise ship, but that's not all. The official MGM casino game really makes you feel like you're in Las Vegas with creative attractions such as Picky Pop, Luck of the Devil, and Cleopatra. I love knowing that I can hop on my phone at any time and feel like I'm right on the Las Vegas Strip. Download MGM Slots Live using the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen right now to get 10 million free chips if you're a new player. Available on the iOS App Store or Google Play, it's that easy, just click the link and go to the landing page and I'll see you in the game. The next day, this angry student walks into the classroom, announcing that there's a curse on their class, and it has just taken another student. He explains the boy forgot to bring the textbook that was written on the blackboard, and insists the ghost has wiped their memories of his existence, but the other kids don't care. Mocking their friend, they force Q here to come in early, and text everyone what book to bring so they don't all die. Nobody believes him, and the boy storms away, furious that he's being bullied, but soon he's going to get the ultimate revenge. The next morning, Q arrives to class late and sends a photo of the blackboard to his schoolmates when all of a sudden he feels something touch his shoulder. He knows he's being haunted but doesn't realize something shocking is about to happen. Later he returns to class and is focusing on his assignment when the lights go out. That's when a ghostly face appears in front of him, scaring the boy until he realizes he was hallucinating. Something strange is going on and that's when he notices the name Wittyug is carved into one of the chairs. After class, an angry student confronts the kid demanding to know why he sent the picture of the blackboard late that morning. Q refuses to answer, instead telling them that he's being haunted by a ghost and has proof. The name Wichia was carved into one of the chairs, and he suggests it might be the name of the last student who failed to bring the right textbook, so the ghost erased him from everyone's memories. The others don't believe him, and Q leaves the classroom determined to prove them wrong. Okay, this kid is not thinking straight. He's trying to convince the bullies that ghosts are going to kill them, but it's a huge mistake. Anyone who's had a bully knows that it doesn't matter what you say, because they're always looking for any excuse to make your life worse. So communicating with them won't do us any good. If the kid was being smart, the boy would have realized that he had the perfect opportunity to get his revenge without saying a single word. Right now, he's being picked on for being superstitious. But if he's right about the curse, then all of his enemies are going to be erased from existence anyways, and his problem problems will be solved. That's why the best decision here is to ignore this blackboard entirely and bring every single one of your textbooks to school with you so we don't piss off the ghost. This way we'll never be without the right book and won't be exposed to any danger by making a mistake. Now the downside is that we can't confirm if the curse is real because we won't remember anyone who gets erased. So as far as we'll know, our solution will just be a superstition. The good news is that we can still protect ourselves and punish these bullies at the same time so we'll never have to deal with them again. They'll all be angry that we didn't report which textbook to bring, but one more day of being bullied is worth it if we think the curse will erase them from existence. The next morning, he arrives at school and walks towards the blackboard to find the next book they'll need, or else the class will all be haunted. Using his phone, he makes a video call showing his classmates that today they'll need their math book when suddenly, a ghost attacks him from behind, knocking the kid out. He wakes up in the nurse's office next to his friend, who tells him that he blacked out, but never mentions seeing any ghost. They walk back to their classroom, but their friend runs into them, revealing he's lost his notebook and is terrified. 
The kid is certain he brought it, and Q promises to help him find a replacement while the others go back. Frustrated, he decides to check his classmate's bag and is shocked to discover his own math book inside. It's clear this nerd stole it from him, and the kid defends himself, explaining that he only did it as a last resort. He left his math book back home and only took it to survive. Furious, Q here knocks him to the ground and scolds the guy for being irresponsible, but the nerd quickly snatches the textbook from his classmate's hands. Suddenly, time freezes as a blue light makes all the other students disappear. The boy has just been erased from existence, and there's nothing he can do to escape. The next morning, Q has had enough and decides to get revenge for being bullied. Arriving at school, he decides to erase the blackboard and sends everyone a fake photo instead, telling them to bring a different textbook. Later, when the other students arrive, they've all brought the wrong book, and the ghost comes to claim the lives of everyone in the room except for Q. Okay, this was a great strategy. Faking the photo so that the kids bring the wrong book was exactly the right move to make here, but it was still a risky strategy. We don't know a lot about this curse other than what the consequences are supposed to be. And even if we can get rid of our enemies, the danger here is that this curse is erasing our memories. That means it's possible we're going to forget everything that happened and eventually forget what conclusions we've drawn to take the superstition seriously. If it were me, I would make sure I didn't become an accidental victim here. And before I ever walk up to the blackboard, I would send my future self a message about what's going to happen. Earlier, we saw that his friend's name was carved into the back of his chair, and even though he had no memory of the kid, the signs of his existence were still there to observe. With this in mind, the smartest approach is to carve a reminder to myself that I've just erased a bunch of bullies from existence, and that I must bring all of my books to class no matter what. If I have a daily reminder that can't be erased, and know that the message is from myself, then it will prove that I have significant gaps in my memory. If you've carved yourself a message you have no memory of, there's no way something that terrifying would be ignored. This way, if we continue to encounter more bullies throughout the school year, we'll have a clear method for how to deal with them, and even if we have no memories, our message from the past will instruct us on how to handle the situation. This is almost like Memento, where the main character had no long-term memory, and used tattoos and Polaroid photos to help him figure out everything that he forgot. Using this method, we would become the most dangerous person in the school, and with that kind of power, we'll never have to get bullied again. That's one ghost story down, with five more to go. And now for the next story. This school is about to be haunted by bloodthirsty premonitions. A girl runs through the halls hunted down by a mysterious figure, and she tries live streaming to call for help. But that was her biggest mistake. Something smacks the phone out of her hand, and she gets dragged to the floor, but there's nothing she can do to save herself. The next morning, the students arrive to class and gossip about the girl who began live streaming last night. One of the students goes to open the window, but they're shocked to discover the girl's dead body right outside. They have no idea that someone in this school planned her death, but playing here is determined to find out what happened. The next morning, she's walking to class when her bully confronts the girl, teasing that her boyfriend is cheating on her. It makes playing furious, and she goes to a classroom to vent, swearing to get revenge on the bully no matter the cost. Later, she goes to the storage room when she hears a voice calling her name from above the ceiling and finds a strange crack. Checking it, she discovers a box was hidden up there and decides to open it, inspecting a series of notes left inside. One of them reveals that she can curse someone to die by writing their name on the bottom of her foot before chanting a spell and stomping on the ground. Angry at the bully, the girl follows the instructions and casts the spell, wishing for the bully's death, never expecting that her dreams are about to come true. The person she cursed begins to freak out, seeing everyone as demons and passes out on the spot. The curse is real, but this revenge plot is about to backfire hard. Okay, that was extreme. Killing a classmate based on an unconfirmed rumor is some pretty reckless decision making here. This girl didn't know the curse would actually work, but she did know that it was designed to kill someone, which is horrifying. The girl took it way too far because the truth is, a simple cat fight would have been enough to solve the problem. If she wanted to defend her boyfriend's honor, she should have noticed that this girl's wearing dangling jewelry and playing here is not. As painful as it would be, this one difference immediately gives her the advantage because one strong tug on her earring would be enough to incapacitate the girl and end the fight. It's a brutal tactic, but it would have been a much more appropriate solution than straight up killing her. Now, we should go without saying that violence outside of death games should be frowned upon, but we can't ignore that if the curse was true, there were much better ways to put this dark power to use. Considering how little effort and practice it took to cast the spell, it would have been much smarter to use this curse on someone who was actually a force of evil in the world, instead of on high school drama. If it were me, I honestly would burn this thing so it couldn't be used against me, but if there was a legitimate reason to have someone 
someone killed, the smarter approach is to convince someone else to cast the spell instead of us. If we know anything about curses, it's that they're almost always a trap, and stories like the monkey's paw or the genie's lamp often end a disaster for whoever uses them. So if we want to reap the benefits from this without putting ourselves at risk, then we should find someone who has the motive to kill the person you want dead, and let them test it out for us first. That night, the girl playing invites her boyfriend to her house, and they start getting intimate. But as he kisses the girl's leg, he discovers a name written on the bottom of her foot and freaks out. That bully is his sister and demands to know what's going on before he's interrupted by a phone call. His sister is begging him for help, and he rushes off to find her. Checking her phone, Plang discovers the livestream of the bully, and she's panicking for her life. It's horrible, and there's nothing she can do to stop the spell from killing her. Plang is horrified that the curse worked, and rubs off the name from her foot. She tries going to sleep, but suddenly wakes up in the middle of the night, and discovers it's reappeared back on her soul. That's when the girl hears a knock at her door, and she goes to open it, discovering her dead dog on the other side. It's terrifying, but things are about to get even worse worse. She collapses in pain and notices that the bottom of her foot is starting to go rotten. She didn't realize that this was the cost of casting the spell, and the girl decides to go to her school so she can burn the box where she found the instructions. It's the only way to make sure that the spell doesn't destroy her, but when she arrives at the storage room and checks the hole in the ceiling, the box has disappeared. Frustrated, she gets down to the floor and tries to walk away when a hand grabs her. It's the ghost of the bully, but she suddenly vanishes without a trace. That's when the girl notices her phone is live streaming. The magic spell has been revealed to all her friends, and they're horrified she could be so cruel. As the spirit reappears, grabbing at her foot, she has no idea that it was her boyfriend who stole the box and found out about the curse. He cast the spell on her to get revenge for her sister's death, and soon he'll discover he'll never be a foot model for the rest of his life. Okay, I hate to say it, but the girl had it coming. Plang already realized that this curse was real, but it never occurred to her that a secret this powerful should be safeguarded to protect herself. Instead, she just left it at school exactly where she found it, giving others the opportunity to use it against her. It's incredibly short-sighted, and the smarter approach would have been to make sure it was hidden in a much safer location. I would even pay for a safety deposit box at a nearby bank to keep this thing contained, because it's not every day you discover the power to kill someone by writing their name on your foot. The next major mistake she made was now realizing that this girl was her boyfriend's sister. If you're planning on killing someone with a curse, the least you could do is write down their full name to make sure you are killing the correct person. Even though this is happening in Thailand, Jenny is an English nickname that's common enough to accidentally misfire the curse and kill someone else who uses the same name. If it were me, I would have gone on Facebook to find the girl's full name, and if she had done her due diligence, Plang would have discovered that it was her boyfriend's sister. With all this in mind, the girl should have checked herself before she wrecked herself, because there was a much better way to use this curse to her advantage. If it were me, I would find a really wealthy student with the grudge, and offer to curse their enemy for a boatload of cash. This way when the deaths are being investigated, the police won't be able to link the killings to us, and the wealthy students won't rat us out because they will incriminate them for giving us money. That's two ghost stories down, with four more to go. And now for the next story. This girl is going to turn into a monster. Aim here is jealous, thinking that she's not as beautiful as the other girls, and wishes she was prettier. Looking online for beauty enhancements, she finds a mysterious website that promises to improve her looks overnight, but she's not allowed to tell anyone about it. The girl agrees to the terms, and immediately hears someone at her door. On the ground is a black box, and bringing it back inside her room, the girl discovers a strange glowing vial. Desperate, the girl drinks all of it without reading any of the warnings, and has no idea she's just made the biggest mistake of her life. The next morning, she walks into the school, and to her classmates' surprise, they all find her gorgeous. Her wish has been granted, and it's the best day of her life, but the most popular girl in their grade, Dao, has found out about the new competition. She's furious that she's losing followers on social media to the ugliest person in school, and confronts Aang. She demands to know how she managed to get so pretty, but the girl refuses to answer her question. That night, she returns back to her place with an irresistible urge to eat rotten meat, and it's clear there's a darker secret behind her new beauty. The next morning at school, Dao overhears people compliment Aim for her looks, and Jealous decides the girl has got to go. Coming up with a plan, she rents a room next to where Aim lives and eavesdrops on her conversation. On the other side of the wall, the girl is chatting with her friend about how she got so beautiful, when Dao suddenly hears banging on the other side. Something is wrong with the girl, and soon she'll discover how dangerous she can be. The next morning, Aim slips a message under the girl's door, and Dao discovers it's a warning for her to stop snooping around, but that just makes her 
furious. Arriving at school, the student confronts the girl, insisting she's hiding something, and Aim begins to walk away, but the girl chases her down. The other students try to break them up, but that's when the teacher intervenes and brings them to his office, making it clear they need to be on their best behavior, or else they'll lose out on the chance to model for their school banners. After the man leaves, Dao demands that the girl reveal how she got so beautiful, but Aim refuses. Frustrated, the jealous student pulls out her phone and shows a video of the girl eating a dead cat. This will ruin her reputation, and Aim finally decides to let her in on the secret. Taking the girl back to her apartment, they walk in, and Aim admits that she needs to eat dead animals in order to survive. It's a requirement for her condition, and there's a lot more she needs to know, but the student doesn't care. She wants to be beautiful, and with no better options, Aim points to where she's hidden the potion just moments before she collapses to the ground. Something horrible is happening to her body, but Dao ignores the student and quickly finds the glowing vial. Desperate, she drinks all of it and checks the effects in the mirror, but that's when she notices Aang's dismembered head floating around the room. She reveals that the vial is made up of their saliva, and they both have been cursed to eat rotting flesh just to survive. It's horrifying, and now she'll never be able to enjoy Thai food for the rest of her life. Okay, this is terrifying. We just found out this potion will turn someone into a monster, and even though the girls didn't expect it, there were definitely signs that something bad was going to happen. For starters, finding a strange website that promises to make you look better overnight is sus, but as soon as she accepted the deal, the package showed up to her doorstep immediately. Not even the most dedicated Amazon delivery driver would be able to pull this off, and it means she's either being cyberstalked by someone in the building, or that it's supernatural. The next mistake was that the girl didn't investigate what this curse is until it was too late. All it took was a quick Google search to find out that she had become a Penangalan. This is a type of spirit that exists in many Southeast Asian cultures, and is famous for appearing as a floating head, with her organs hanging below her neck. In Thailand, this spirit is known as a Krasu, and they can only survive by living off of rotten meat or blood. Now, we can't blame the girl for wanting to be beautiful, but the problem here is that butchering stray animals every day isn't sustainable. The good news is that Thai cuisine has several dishes that might be able to help her out. Fermented crab and fish are commonly used in a famous dish called somtam, or consumed as a paste known as para. It might not be as filling as a dead cat, but it's definitely going to make it easier to hide your secret from others. Now with that said, there's a huge missed opportunity that the girl should have realized. If all she had to do was make a Google search for instant access to a magical beauty potion, then it's reasonable to wonder if this must be happening to others around the world. What's strange is that no one else knows about this, and if it's such a big secret, then she could easily make money by selling it to others. Aim found out that the potion is actually made from her own saliva, so if she bottled it up like snake venom, the girl could get insanely rich by selling to clients who would pay top dollar to be the most beautiful person in the room. That's three ghost stories down with three more to go. And now for the next story. This girl is going to find the worst death note in the world. Saipan here is hiding from her bullies when she suddenly hears her name being called and it's coming from inside the library. Curious, she tries to track down the voice, but is caught at the last minute by her bullies. They're about to beat her up, but are interrupted by the librarian, who orders them to get out of here. The girls quickly leave, and as thanks, the student volunteers to help arrange the books. Later, as she's getting to work, a book drops from one of the shelves, and she discovers it's called the Book of Corpses. But before she can open it, the librarian warns her that they're closing. Taking the book, the girl is about to head back out, but notices that the woman was reading this news article about a murdered teacher from their school. Curious, she asks what happened, and the librarian explains that the victim disappeared and was last seen in this very library. It's terrifying, but the librarian explains that the school is full of scary legends, such as the tale of Ploi Pum. She was a student that was viciously picked on and locked in the toilet for months until she died. Supposedly, her story was written down in a book, and the librarian urges the girl to confide with her if she keeps on getting bullied. The next morning, Saipan is curious and finds the toilet where the girl in the story had died, but she's suddenly pushed inside by the other students who are determined to make her life a living hell. They quickly leave the bathroom and lock the door behind them, giving her no way out. It's terrifying, but that's when the student looks in the mirror and notices a ghost staring straight at her. The girl backs away in shock, but the librarian breaks into the restroom and tries to comfort the girl, telling her she's just hallucinating. Okay, I'm starting to wonder if Thailand has a bullying problem. So far, all these stories involve kids who are being aggressively picked on, and it's because they have virtually no support from anyone in the school. With this in mind, we can't be too surprised that there are so many ghosts around, because spirits tend to feed off of the pain and suffering of the living. Now having said that, this girl is not being smart. She befriended the librarian because she thought the woman defended her, but all she really said was that they can't be loud in the library. This was not very helpful, because there were no threats of dis 
disciplinary action at all. If the girl stopped to think about it, she would have realized that for a teacher to respond this way is highly suspicious and probably means there's more to her than we realize. The next clue is that she found this book of corpses on the floor, and anyone with a brain would be asking themselves why a school library would have such a messed up book. What's even worse is that the teacher came over and clearly saw the book in the girl's hands. For a Thai person, this text is hard to overlook because there's nothing else on the cover except for the words Book of Corpses, and any librarian with a conscience would know that it didn't belong to her library and was inappropriate for her students. All of these observations combined tell me not to trust this woman because she's not doing anything to keep us out of danger, so we'll have to deal with these bullies on our own. Later that night, the girl calms down and reads the bathroom story in the Book of Corpses, but is shocked to suddenly find herself in the bathroom as the tale plays out in real life. It's horrifying as she watches the students suffer, but that's when she breaks out of her trance. She realizes that this book is not only magical, but was also the dead girl's diary. Later, she approaches the librarian, asking what happened to the bullies in the legend, and finds out they were arrested, but ended up murdering each other in their jail cells. It's exactly how the story ended, and the girl suspects that whatever is written into the book becomes true. The next morning in class, the student decides to test out her theory and writes down a story to see if she can punish her own bullies, but is interrupted when the school bell rings. Heading to her next class, she bumps into her bullies and drops the book of corpses onto the ground. The leader decides to pick on her and reads out an excerpt from the story she wrote down, mocking the girl for being such a loser. That's when she takes a pair of scissors and starts cutting off strands of Saipan's hair. It's cruel, but as the bullies wander off, she decides to finish writing her story and curses the leader to die. Later that night, she finds the leader standing in a hallway, but is shocked to see that the girl starts freaking out and can't do nothing as a group of ghosts murder her on the spot. Terrified, the girl discovers the book of corpses is missing from her bag and goes to the library to search for it. Saipan here enters the building, when suddenly a body drops out of the ceiling and the student panics. The girl tries to escape, but finds the librarian waiting for her, and the woman reveals a terrifying secret. In the past, she used the book of corpses to kill someone that attacked her, but at the cost of becoming becoming the book slave and needed to find a new person who will write their stories in the pages. Suddenly, she begins to transform in front of the student's eyes and there's nothing the girl can do to escape her fate. Okay, this is horrifying. The woman was a ghost this entire time and tricked the girl into using the book so that it would set her free. What's even worse is that she managed to store a dead body in the ceiling for over a week without anybody noticing. This is a clear indication that nobody in this school ever reads because anyone who walks into the library would immediately notice the stench of a dead body in the ceiling. Now, it almost seems impossible to beat this ghost story without suffering some pretty serious consequences. The obvious decision here is to throw the book away because reading the diary of a dead girl that you've already seen in the mirror is enough for me to quit school permanently. At this point, she had already tried using the book as a death note in order to murder her bullies, and since this is a cursed item, we have to expect that it's going to cost us something in return. That's why if it were me, and I had already made the mistake of trying to kill the bullies, I would immediately write a new story that counteracts it in an effort to keep myself safe. If every death we write into this book becomes true, then we should strategically sidestep any evil consequences by adding to the story, saying that 70 years later, we die happily in bed surrounded by our loved ones. This would force all of the ghosts to break their own rules in order to kill us, and as scary as that might seem, it's probably a safe bet that it would work. The spirit world is extremely legalistic, and the librarian is good evidence of this. She has been bound as a slave to the book with no way to escape, and if something this horrifying can't bend the rules, then that means using the book to write our own ending is the best way we can protect ourselves. That's four ghost stories down, with two more to go. And now, for the next story. This kid is going to become someone's lunch. Kong hears a streamer investigating rumors of a famous food stall. It became popular for its new dish, but there might be something sketchy going on. He's determined to find out what the cook's secrets are, but this will be his biggest mistake. Noticing the woman walking back into her kitchen, he steps behind the counter to take a look at what's inside the soup pot, but gets distracted reading the comments on his live stream as the chef comes back. She tells him to leave, but the kid refuses, demanding to see what secret ingredient she uses in her stew. He tries to grab a hold of the pot, but the woman pushes him away and sends them to the ground. That's when the kid notices a boiled skull on the floor and accuses the woman of putting a dog's head in her soup. 
The others pull out their phones to record everything that's happening, but they have no idea this woman is going to have the last laugh. Later, the boy hangs out with his friends, and one of them congratulates him for exposing the cook, but he's suddenly distracted by a pain in his neck. The kid recently got his streamer name tattooed there, but as the other boys chat, he notices a strange figure in black staring straight at him. It's scary, but the kid quickly rushes to his next class when someone bumps into him. He chases the figure all the way out to the gymnasium, but that's when he gets attacked. Terrified, the kid runs for his life and manages to escape, but some other students notice him freaking out and are confused about what's going on. He tells them someone just tried to attack him, but when they look inside, there's no sign of anyone. The boy goes back to the food stall and confronts the woman, accusing her of sending someone to harass him, and that's when he spots the same hooded figure in the kitchen. Noticing this photo, he realizes the stranger must have been her son and decides to drag him out as proof, but finds there's nobody inside. Confronting him, this old man explains there's no way he'll find her son because the kid was found dead several weeks ago and his head was missing. Kong is embarrassed and gets pushed back outside where the other students have heard everything and defend the woman, arguing he's harassing her without proof that it was a dog skull he found in her stew. The boy is humiliated, and with his reputation ruined, he decides to get his revenge by framing the woman with a dead cat. That night, he goes back to school and sneaks inside the kitchen to carry out his plan, but that's when he finds something shocking. It's a feast prepared for the woman's dead son, and he pulls out his phone to stream it, but the device glitches out. Feeling something behind him, he turns around as a hand grabs his face before throwing him back. It's the woman's son, and he takes off his hood, revealing that he's a ghost. Terrified, the kid begs her to spare his life and promises to not tell anyone about this, but the woman refuses. Instead, she stabs him straight in the stomach and makes it clear he'll never leave here alive. A few days later, the students are in the lunchroom eating soup when they suddenly realize something is wrong. They recognize their friend's neck tattoo floating in the soup, and everyone panics, wasting a perfectly balanced meal. Okay, this is terrifying. The lunch lady was secretly feeding people soup that was seasoned with her son's decaying head, and the kid had every reason to expose her. The only problem was that he pissed off her son's ghost in the process. Now, as terrifying as it is, there's actually something we can use against him. This ghost disappeared at the gymnasium when other students came by, and later in the kitchen, he was only visible to the kid. This means the spirit can choose who sees him and who can't, but that also reveals a weakness. If it's trying to stay invisible to everyone else, the simplest thing to do to protect ourselves is to attach a camera to our bodies and keep it pointed at us. The kid is already a streamer, so it's not going to be strange behavior for him, and if the ghost knows that the boy is being recorded 24-7, then he won't be able to touch him without proving he exists. It won't risk being caught as long as someone is watching, and this way we can avoid the ghost's attacks. Now with that said, the kid still needed to take down the cook, but his plan to frame the woman was completely stupid. First of all, using a dead cat doesn't make any sense, because he publicly accused the chef of using dog meat. The next problem is that if we put anything else into the soup, then it will change the taste. And if people notice the difference, then it will prove any new ingredient wasn't what she had been using. This will leave an obvious trail that could be traced back to us and will get you in even more trouble. The smarter approach is to find an animal carcass and put it in the back of the kitchen fridge instead of in the soup. That way, the woman won't know it's there to remove it, and all we need to do is report her to the food health inspectors to have them investigate the school. Eventually, they'll discover undeniable proof that she has unhealthy the ingredients, helping the boy prove he was right. That's five ghost stories down, with one more to go. And now, for the final story. This kid is going to get some brutal revenge. Khan here has been brought to this abandoned infirmary, and his bullies won't leave him alone. After beating the kid up, they try to terrorize the boy, and that's when the girl reminds them all of the local legend. According to the stories, the ghost of a nurse who works here still haunts this place, and she will appear if someone sits in a wheelchair with their back facing the door. It's terrifying, but the catch is that the person can wish for anything they want, and it will come true. Acting quickly, the bullies shove the victim into a wheelchair and tie his wrists down, ignoring the boy's cries for help. They demand he make a wish for them to pass their exams, never making it clear if they'll ever come back. The bullies leave him inside the infirmary with no way to escape, and the kid has no idea he's about to become a part of a terrifying ghost story. Later, Gon notices someone walking past the curtains and calls out for help, thinking someone's come back for him, but then he hears a voice asking if he wants to make a wish. It's the ghost of the nurse, and she reaches a handout freeing him from the wheelchair. Panicking, he stands up as quickly as possible and demands the creature show itself. It appears again behind a curtain and orders him to make a wish, giving him the chance for revenge. Terrified, he asks it to kill the three kids who have been bullying him before running out of the room as fast as he can. Meanwhile, one of the bullies, Bomb, is trying to 
smoke when a bucket falls to the ground. Startled, he ignores it and goes to pick up his lighter when he notices a wheelchair roll out from under a tarp. The kid looks around trying to figure out if this is a prank when the chair suddenly appears in front of him and he falls to the ground in shock. That's when a sheet falls on his head and the ghost decides to murder the boy with a power drill, sending it spinning straight through his skull. Okay, these students definitely had this coming to them. They already knew there was a legend that allowed someone to make any wish they wanted, so they forced another student to wish they passed their exams. If I'm being honest, this has to be the dumbest wish I've ever heard in my life. First of all, there are plenty of ways to cheat on your exam that don't involve ghosts, and it wouldn't be hard for a group of bullies like this to extort someone into giving them all the answers or switching names on their tests so that they can pass. It's not difficult to come up with practical solutions for this, but nobody stopped to think about what else they could wish for if the ghost story was actually true. If these kids had any brains at all, they would have forced this boy to help them cheat on the exams and then used him as a guinea pig to make him wish that they all got supercars. It's no wonder they're worried about passing their exams because it's clear they're not the sharpest tools in the shed. Now with that being said, Gon here isn't doing much better because he made the same mistake. The kid was given a chance to wish for anything he wanted, but instead of asking for wealth, immortality, or even superpowers, he decided to waste this wish to kill a handful of bullies from a wheelchair. The boy has no imagination, and if he was smart about it, he could have taken advantage of this ghost and used its own offer against it. The most important thing to realize here is that this curse is basically a blank check. As far as we know, there aren't any conditions, and she told him directly that whatever he asks for will come true. Now, it's possible this ghost isn't telling us the full story. So if it were me, I would first ask questions about the rules to make sure we aren't walking into a trap. Generally speaking, spirits tend to lie by omission or use your own insecurities against you. But if we ask her directly what we're allowed to do, it's very likely she'll be obliged to tell us the truth. Once we've covered all the possible loopholes in this wish-making process, I would ask to be sent a single dollar and then double the amount each day for a month. The ghost might think it sounds like a very humble request, but the truth is, after 30 days, I would have over a billion dollars. This is a much smarter approach than just asking for it all at once, because the ghost might have the right to refuse your offer, in which case we would end up with nothing. Later at school, God is heading to class when his bullies spot him. They confront the boy, demanding to know if he wished for what they told him to, but before he can answer, a student runs up the stairs, freaking out that Bomb has been found dead. He was one of the bullies, and the kid reveals that instead of passing their exam, he wished for their deaths. There's nothing they can do to escape their fate, and the bullies try to run away, but find a wheelchair waiting for them on the staircase. The girl pushes her friend towards it and leaves him for the ghost to kill, as she continues making her way down the stairs. With the bully left to die at the hands of the nurse, the girl tries to run off campus, but finds her way blocked by the same wheelchair as before. Their victim's wish has come true, and one by one, they're each brutally murdered. Later that day, Gonhir finds out that his bullies have been killed, and heads back to the abandoned nurse's office. He wants to perform the ritual again to get back at everyone who ever bullied him, but this will be the last mistake of his life. The ghost returns to the infirmary and promises to fulfill his new wish, but for every dead body, one of his body parts will be taken. Suddenly, he realizes his fingers have begun to rot, and the ghost drops a horrifying truth bomb. There are 33 bullies who have to die now, and she leaves them behind to go hunt them down. Across the city, the students start getting killed, and Gon yells at the spirit to stop, insisting he takes back his wish. But it's too late. His his entire body begins to rot away, and there's nothing he can do to save himself as the nurse drags him back into the infirmary. That's all six ghost stories down, and now you'll all have nightmares. But what do you think? How would you beat school tales? Let me know with a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching, leave a like and subscribe, and check out the How To Be playlist for more videos like this. Until next time, have a damn good day.